Hey everyone, it's Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries. Um, I am so excited to be on with you today. I'm excited every time I come on with you. There are so many amazing things happening in the spirit. I mean, if I could only let all of you feel what I feel on a daily basis, of course you might lose your mind, but you would understand the knowing of everything and the amazing things in the spirit that God is doing and it's an exciting time to be alive. Anyway, very quickly, we're going to be in Nashville 20th and 21st of February. We are going to be doing uh, a culmination of our The Heritage of the Lord Shall Prevail fast, 40-day fast we've been doing. We're going to end the fast in Nashville and we're just going to take all the glory and the Holy Spirit that's been built up with our fasting and praying over the over those 40 days that will the, the 40th day is the 19th of February and we're going to bring that glory to Nashville and we're going to pray it through and we're going to stand firm and we're going to just pray for whatever God's called us to pray for we're going to move prophetically we're going to worship we're going to have a time of pure worship and prophetic worship prophetic prayer and we are just going to believe for the heritage of the Lord to prevail in this nation for the body of Christ to take possession of their inheritance because half of the body of Christ has not been walking in it. And if we do, we can shake nations for the glory of Jesus Christ. And so please come and see us in Nashville. We would love to see you. We are going to be at Hadley Park and most likely we want to try to hit the warmest part of the day. So 2 p.m. on Saturday, the 20th, 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 21st, February and we're just going to rock it. Uh, there's a stage there. There's seating and everything. Um, come, get ready to just get your prayer on. It's going to be an amazing time with the Lord. And we're just going to just go and flow however he calls us to go. And so come and join us as we go and release the glory from Nashville. And we believe that's what God's going to do. Um, also, we had an amazing time in North Carolina. We had some miracles happen. People were healed. It was an amazing time. It was, it was an honor to be with you guys, and we cannot wait to be with you again someday. Um, also, we will be coming back to California um, at the end of March in some form. Be watching for those announcements. Uh, we will be doing baptisms and all that. We are so excited to come back to California and just see all of you again and more new people that we've we've added to the ministry and that are following the church now and gotten saved we're ready to baptize you so we're going to be coming back to california the lord has told us to do that um also if you need links to anything down below in the description of every video is links to spirit move church our sunday services um uh, any info you need for for uh deliverance ministry our covenant prayer movement is our prayer ministry um I mean, you name it, it's below in the description. Usually there's a link that you can find to go to whatever you're looking for. Um, this, is, this is a word that the Lord gave me that I'm going to be getting ready to release. It's kind of like part two of the hammer. Uh, the hammer's coming down. Um, and if, if this is your first time watching this word, you need to go back, and I'll kind of remind you as we go, of the words that I've released, that everyone needs to go back and fully watch them to prepare your hearts for what God's about to do between February and May, and it's going to be amazing. Um, and so it was about the 14th of January, the Lord gave me a vision of the hammer again. If you go back and watch my word, the hammer's coming down, um, you will see how God spoke that whole word to me. I mean, I, I was literally away on a writing retreat and he hit me with the glory in the afternoon. And he said, he gave me a vision of a hammer. And I said, okay, God, I said, why are you giving me a vision of a hammer? And he said, the hammer's coming down. And he said, the prayers of the saints have built up and our prayers are preparing to come down and destroy the work of the devil that he has been building up in our nation for years upon years. And the Lord said, the hammer's getting ready to come down. And that was an amazing word that he gave me. He even gave me a verse to go with it. It blows my mind how he confirms everything. And then he told me to go to a certain gospel chapter. And uh, it's the verses where Jesus says, woe to you if you fall on the rock. 
you will be broken to pieces. But even more woe to you if the rock, Jesus Christ, the glory, the buildup falls on you. If you fall on the rock, you'll be broken to pieces. But if the rock falls on you, you will be pulverized to powder. That's what the verse said. Woe, woe, woe. Amen. And so I've, I've given several words since then. Go back, get, start watching them in order because the times and seasons words, I give them in the order God gives them to me. Now, what I'm about to share, this vision he gave me uh, was on January 14th, and it is kind of part two to the hammer. He gave me a vision when I was deep in worship of a hammer hitting a rock. It was like a rock with that was rock and metal, and it was smashing it. And I was like, okay, that's weird. It's like it just came out of nowhere. And I always know that's when God's trying to give me a prophetic picture. And so I continued on in worship, and he gave me the vision like three or four more times. And I could just feel the power of the glory in the hit of the rock as it was pulverized and smashed. And there was metal and everything in it. And I asked God, I said, what is going on? And this is what he said. The hammer is about to hit. The hammer that was coming, preparing to come down, which has been the buildup. And see, we've prayed even more since then. Since I released that word, the body of Christ, those that are still walking in faith for what God's going to do. We have been praying even more than ever before. And he said, the hammer is about to hit. And I was like, okay. And I could just feel the glory of, of what God's going to do. And then he didn't release me. I felt like he was telling me, it's not time to release this yet. It's not time. It's not, it's, you know, times and seasons. It's not that time to release the hammer's about to hit. And, um... So then fast forward, that was a couple of weeks ago. He tells me over the last couple of days, he's been giving me little tidbits to lead me towards the releasing of this word right now that I'm releasing, this vision that he gave me. And uh, usually I will wait for a scripture confirmation when he gives me a word or a vision or whatever. And so it was probably four or five days ago, out of nowhere, I was at Prayer Mountain and he said, see, he likes to, you know, when you're prophetic, he can be funny. Um, it's just the life we live. And so I'm sitting at Prayer Mountain, and out of nowhere, he says, go to Jeremiah 23. And I was like, okay. So I begin to read through Jeremiah 23. And as I'm reading through it, um, he highlights and he brings me to this verse. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This should blow your mind. Amen. I can feel the glory. He has a scripture to go with everything that he has to say. He doesn't mess around. And amen for that because I like confirmation. So then I knew I, I notated it and I was like, okay, God, you're telling me that's the verse that goes with the vision you gave me about the hammers about to hit. And he said, yes. And he said, um, he was confirming in me that he is like a hammer that comes down and breaks the rock in pieces. And that's what he's about to do. Everything, all that evil that we have been praying and building up prayers is about to be poured out. And when that happens, it's like a hammer coming down and smashing a rock to pieces. And he said, it's about to hit. And I had been waiting for a release time. And when I, I had a dream last night and um, two prophetic dreams last night. And I, and I really wasn't even asking God. I was just, you know, he knows my thoughts and my heart. And I was just like, okay, God, I know you want me to release that before February. And here's, here's why. Now, if you haven't been watching my words, go back and watch the word that says the next five months. I might change the title on that so that more people understand what it is. But basically, God gave me a dream way back, like July of 2020. And in the dream, he said two to five. He kept waking me up over and over with two to five. And I was like, okay. And that's the dates that we did our Nehemiah Prayer Summit. But he also said that it's more than that. He said... February through May are key months in 2021. 
there's going to be a cleansing and a removal and an exposure in the church and the body of Christ and in America and the government and our leadership and all that. He said, it's all going to go down February. Not all of it. It's going to be a year's process. You guys have to understand. There's a lot of evil to unravel. But he said, February to May. And so, because I already knew that in my spirit, I knew that I wasn't going to release this word. He said I needed to release it by February 1st. And so today is the 31st of January. So I had to release it before tomorrow to be obedient to the Lord. But he confirmed it in me because yesterday I was in my spirit just kind of saying, okay, God, when am I releasing the hammers about to hit? Because it's almost February and I felt like you wanted me to do it by February 1st. Can you confirm in me that, you know, um, I'm hearing you correctly and, you know, I'm not crazy with my journal full of words that he's given me that I know what the spirit is saying. And he gave me a dream last night and I'm going to tell you the dream. Um, and it just, I know it's going to sound like a weird dream, but it confirms some things in me. So in the dream, we were, I don't know where we were, um, what city we were in, but Donald Trump was there uh, with his suit on playing golf in the streets and he was cool as a cucumber he was he was he was dressed for work like he was working but he was playing golf like he was relaxed cool as a cucumber and he was playing golf down in the streets and we were actually went up and talked to him and said hey you know um what's going on what's the plan um what what's your next step what are you planning to do and he just continued as relaxed as could be in his suit, not in, not in golf clothes, but in his suit, playing golf and strategizing. And he was thinking, and then the dream ended. And so you have to understand, I, then I wait for an interpretation. That seems like a weird dream, but I know what I felt within the dream. And so when I get, get up this morning, I'm like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me with this dream about Trump? And he said, don't believe that he's, he's just, because he's quiet right now, that he's just quit, he's given up, and that evil's going to win. He said, don't believe that. He said, Trump is cool as a cucumber. He's relaxed, and he's strategizing. He's in strategy mode, and that's why he was golfing, which is relaxing, but he was in his suit. He wasn't in golf clothes. And I remember thinking in the moment in the dream, I, so I always go back and I think to myself, okay, what was I feeling in the dream? And in the dream, I felt like he was saying, um, it may look like I'm relaxed, but I'm strategizing and I'm at work. And so I felt like the Lord was letting me know through that dream this morning, I was like, I knew today's the day that I'm going to release the word the hammer's about to hit. And he also led me through the dream. He said, we need to all be praying for him because you guys let go of the whole being accused of Trumpism and all this stuff. You have to understand, go back and watch my words over the last year. I don't follow politics. I don't watch the news. I am pure hearted. What I release is what God has told me. I am pure hearted. I don't, I'm not leaning to one side or the other. I'm not listening to people. I, I, I'm not following conspiracies. I only know what God has told me. And I'm not going to let the devil water that down by other people choosing to stop thinking that God's still working. Okay. And that's a whole nother side note. But um, I felt in the dream that God was just basically letting us know he's working. He's quiet right now, but he's working. That he still has a plan. All his words are true and real. We can trust it. And that we need to be praying for Trump right now because for whatever reason, I don't know, guys, God's chosen to use him for this season. Maybe because he can't be bought. Maybe because he has guts and he'll stand up to people. He doesn't have no one to impress but, but Jesus. And so um, with that in mind, God knows that he'll, he can use him and that, that he's not afraid of other people. He can't be bought. He, for those who don't know, he worked as our president with no pay. 
He didn't need our money. He worked for free. So, you know, the thing is, is we have to pray for him. And I felt very strongly that the Lord said this morning, pray for him, that he, that he keeps his fire, that his oil stays full, that he stays full of oil of the Holy Spirit, full of fire and zeal to continue going forward with what everything that God has birthed him for during this season. And this has nothing to do with worshiping somebody. It's the reality. Look at this. Okay, let's look back over history. We don't worship Paul. We, we don't worship Ezekiel. We don't worship Jeremiah. No, but we look up to, to men or women of God who are speaking the word. There has to come a point where you trust what God's doing and you trust who he chooses. It's not a Trumpism or a worshiping or it's not even like that. So if you're listening to this word and you're like, oh my gosh, you just continue on with the Trump stuff. No, God's the one that gave me the dream. I get prophetic dreams. He chooses them. And I'm telling you this right now. I don't ask for dream, dreams about Trump or, or anyone else. I let God do what he's going to do. But I knew this morning the Lord was saying, okay, you need to release this word before February 1st. The hammer's about to hit. The hammer's about to hit. And the Lord is saying to the church, Trust your prayers. They have been being built up. And the downpour is about to hit. And I already released that word. And it's going to be intentional. All of our prayers are being stored up. God's going to dump them out. And then whoosh, they're going to crash down. And they're going to pulverize the devil and his works. They're going to destroy. Go back and watch my word. The hammer's coming down. The hammer is our prayers. Do you don't you don't think you have any authority in Christ? You don't think your prayers are valuable to to save America and restore America back to the heart of God and to their their original covenant that they made, the original men that came over to create this free world. And so, we have to know that our prayers are valuable and we've built up so much more prayers since I released the hammer first hammer word part 1. And so we have to pray for everyone God chooses to use. It's not about a man or idolizing or anything like that. It's no different that if, if God says, I chose Paul, or are we idolizing Paul? Because we believe God called, called Paul to be this man of God doing this, this, and this. We're not idolizing Paul, but we honor the words that Paul has written in the Bible. And a lot of us live by them, correct? Are we worshiping Paul because we live by that word? No. And it's the same way. God can use whoever he wants to use. We don't choose that. We're not idolizing anyone. It's no different than us reading the words that Paul wrote and applying them to our life. We're not worshiping Paul. We, we are following the word that is produced by the Holy Spirit through the man that God has chosen. We don't know why he's chosen Trump, but I will, like I said a minute ago, it could be because he's gutsy and he can't be bought. And so because of that, God can use him. And I believe he's been using him. He's been speaking to him for the last four years, preparing him to, for the big reveal. Jesus is going to be revealed, but also evil is going to be revealed. Amen. And so the hammer's about to hit y'all. And if you don't think that the hammer is biblical, Jeremiah 23, 29. Very biblical. Very biblical. God does come down like a hammer. And he does crush the enemy. And he will. And so keep praying. Keep believing. You guys, I'm just telling you right now, I've done jumped off the cliff and I'm going with it because God gave me another prophetic dream. Um, about guarding the words he's given me and not letting myself be affected by the world or by what other Christians do or don't do or other prophets who, are, or, or, who have decided to step aside and not believe the plan of God shall be fulfilled. Um, and so in light of that, I'm going to continue speaking what he's told me for our times and seasons, even if I'm the last one standing. 
because here's here's my take on this and I, and I'm not, I'm not going to get all like in the glory emotional with you but this is what I this is my take on it and I've had this conversation with the Lord there are men and women that have gone before us and we disrespect them by acting like because it's not happening how we think or it's not happening in our timeline that their words are not true, that those prophecies were a lie when they were not a lie. And when we're doing that, we are dismissing mighty men and women of God. Some of them are not even with us anymore. They have already passed away. How terrible to be on the reaping end of that. You reapy what you sowy. I don't want to be on the... On, on the wrong side of that because I know how I felt the day after the election and everything that all the fraud that was going on in the night and the stopping of the counting and all this weird stuff it's like okay something's up here the next morning as soon as I got up I went downstairs and God had been waking me up with prepare the way song revivals in the air Bethel album and he told me, turn it on. And I turned it on and I was letting it play. And in my spirit, and, and I pray prophetically. So as he tells me things, I just pray. I don't come with a list or anything like that. And I was just getting my tea ready. And the song was playing. And out of nowhere, he just says, begin to declare out loud what the prophets have spoken shall come to pass. And so I just began to declare it. And when I did that, glory filled my kitchen. And you have to know, by now, I know what it feels like for the presence to rise up and permeate my house. That means he's pleased with what I'm saying. And his glory is in it. And his word is true. And as the song was saying, prepare the way. God's on the move whether we're ready or not. Listen to the song. It's awesome. It'll get you all hepped up in the glory. He's on the move. He doesn't do everything the way that we think or the way that, that we expect. He doesn't, he's not man. He's God. And, and here's, let me throw this out there and then I'm going to end this word because man, it's longer than I expected it to be. <laughs> sorry. Um, not sorry. Not sorry. Um, so here's the thing. God has to look at every aspect. So his ultimate goal isn't just to expose evil and, oh, there you go, it's done. All of you get arrested, go to jail. Now we're going to create a new America. You know, it's, no. You have to understand, God looks at every view of everything. Ultimately, everything has to be done for our good and his glory. It's got to be him doing it. It's got to be his way. And, and, and I will just tell you this right now. I know the heart of God well enough to know. He's looking for salvation of souls. Anything he does when he exposes, it's to clean. It's to strengthen. But it's also to bring people to him. To the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The son of God. That's his ultimate goal. So you have to understand, he has a lot of configuring he has to do when he does things. It's much bigger than just, oh, expose the evil. This has been a rigged, rigged election. It was stolen, whatever. No, it's much bigger than that. He's looking at the heart of the people too. We have to look at it the same way. And we have to let him do it however he wants to do it and let it play out however it has to play out. But I will tell you this, go back and watch the word that I released about February to May. These are pivotal months we're coming into. Amen. All for God's glory and kingdom. These next few months, well, these years are going to be big, but he told me two to five. And then June, we need to be interceding for June because that's going to be a big month. Anyway, you guys are awesome. You're amazing. I cannot wait to see a lot of you in Nashville in person. We're going to pray it up, you guys. And we're going to pray it out.
Keep praying, keep interceding, keep believing. The hammer's about to hit. The rock's getting crushed. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just lift up every person watching this video, Lord. I pray that you would give them peace, Lord, that you would fill them with who you are, that they would trust you in this season ahead, that they would not fear, Lord, and they would not waver, but they would continue to pray, not pray anything specific other than your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, for heaven to invade earth. Amen. Let's pray that, everybody, and let's believe for it. You guys are awesome. Have an amazing day. The hammer's about to hit. And I will talk to you later.